So after you have something handy to wipe your palette knife off, knife off with, keep that handy because you'll get clumps. So look, I'm just going to start in a spot. See? Pink. There's no rhyme or reason other than I do like to kind of put it around hardware. I just kind of stand back and look at a piece and decide where I want the color balanced, but I don't want it everywhere. I want it in a few special spots. So look. I'm using the paint that was already on here. I mean, I meant to say the water. I'm using the water. I'm going to dab that. I'm going to dab that. I'm going to dab that. All my pink spots. Guys, go over it like this. Scrape it. Look, you're rubbing that pink into the grain of the teal. You're mixing them up. You're making it weathered. You're distressing. You may even have a wood paper right here. Wipe. to distress the entire piece with just this thing. I'm not even going to use a sanding block on this piece today. I didn't at all use a sanding block. I used only the palette knife to distress with the water, the wet distressing, because when you spray on the water, it reactivates your paint even if it's dry. Okay, are we feeling like an artist yet? I hope so. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go all the way down. So guys, this isn't your look. I get it. But if you're following me on Pinterest, if you're not, I have a whole, um, what do you call them, a whole group of pins that um, have doors, old doors from Mexico, doors from Bali, doors from Morocco. They, I love them. Like, it's my thing. It, the old doors are my jam. And if you watched, if you've been following me for a while, you have seen where I have done um, furniture pieces to match. Like, I found a door that inspired me for my furniture makeover. So. If you like this look, get on Pinterest and follow my board titled Old Doors. Um, I think it's called Doors Around the World, actually. So, um, that's kind of my thing, is to have a piece of furniture that looks like it could have been around 100 years. Totally a one of a kind. And, um, you know, that's something that nobody else has. And when you find an old armor like this that nobody wanted in a store, it's really fun to give it a whole new look and a whole new vision for it. And some people will say, what do you do with these old armors? I say, what can't you do with these old armors? I mean, you can make it a craft cabinet. You can make it an office. I had one lady buy two of these from me and we shipped them to Pennsylvania. And she wears a lot of sweaters and she doesn't have any storage in her old home. So she bought two of these to store her sweaters. And we put like three cedar shelves in them for her. Um, I thought that was a brilliant idea. I've had someone else buy them wanting to do a coffee. Like a coffee bar out next to their counter kitchen. That was a brilliant idea. So as you can see, guys, I'm just adding this fuchsia in here. I am actually still going to use Queen Bee here in just a few minutes. But let me go ahead and finish all of this area here. It's drying really quickly today. Um, and then I'm going to continue and just this sucker and get all of the extra finish off and I'm gonna let that sea glass come all the way through it's gonna be gorgeous Bitch, don't be gentle do not be gentle people do not do not be gentle. It can handle it. It's big. It's scraped. And I have beat it up with this palette knife. So now for the fun stuff, I'm going to get up this Queen Bee because anything about Morocco says add some gold. Everything's all goldy. So we have gold. I am not going to water it down. But this is a touch of Queen Bee watered down very much. And it gives it just a faded look. That's what we mean, faded. My boys think it's so funny. They just came around the corner and hooked me with like a pool net and hooked it over my head because they knew I was on camera. Yeah, I got the dog. I put her up. Okay, Queen Bee. Look, spray it, water it. Very quickly, you guys, it pulls a green color. That's faded. I want it very sheer. And I'm going to spray, 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 spray. 
little bit of this yellow goes a long way. But it's giving it a little bit of a faded look. It helps with the ombre. I'm going to go as quickly as I can. Okay. You see? It's a, still a little bright right now, but that's just because it's still wet. And when I put the wax over it, I'm adding the black and here and there and just kind of wearing it down. You just kind of have to go with your gut instinct, you guys. Stand back and look at it and think about where you want a little bit of yellow. As you can see, well, I don't think you can see, but that bottom drawer over there's got a lot of the yellow on it. See it down there? And in that corner right there, I'm gonna kinda try to match it, but I'm not gonna worry about getting it just right. I'm just gonna add, literally, I think just like the, the color that's on the lid. See? See how it's just tipped? That's all I'm gonna use. Spray the drawer first, one, two, three, and then whisk it. And it automatically starts pulling like this faded blue. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I love it. Some of my favorite pieces are the blue and the yellows, and they almost have a little bit of green in them. Well, this is what I've done. I just did this with a little bit of yellow, and it looks like I'm pulling, putting green on. I'm just mixing blue and yellow like green, blue. That's it. So spray it. Let it, let it go. I ain't gonna touch it again. Well, yeah, I am gonna touch it right here. I lied. Just go. Spray, no lines. Just spray it till it starts to drip. I'm gonna add a little bit of that. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna dip it one more time in the paint lid. Boop. This is it. See, very little. I'm going to do this spot right here. See, that bright yellow fades very quickly. Okay, very quickly. Make it go down. Drip, 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 drip. I got too much paint. Drip, drip, drip. And the layers come through. It starts dripping. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, God. So many shades of blue in here and of course it's my favorite now we have to dry stand back get yourself a drink chill out hopefully my son doesn't come hook me over the head with another pull net okay so after giving you a little bit of a closer look we're gonna go with wax I got black we're gonna do the black at the top sporadically we are not going to cover the entire piece we're doing it where we feel like it will naturally be darker and then there's the lighter areas. Remember, so the top part's gonna get a lot of black wax. Slowly, it will fade. Then I'm doing a little bit down at the bottom, like we're at the legs and the, and the drawer. I'm gonna do a little bit more and then the rest of it's just gonna get a very thin coat of clear. I think my son's singing and he doesn't know that I'm filming. It's just funny, hope we can get him on here. Okay, it looks like this has shifted. I apologize. We keep getting up so close and personal, don't we, today? Okay, guys, I'm gonna start a little bit here at the top. I'm not sure if you can see it up here, but I'm just getting a little bit of this black wax, which I love at the DIY black wax. It's so soft and creamy, and it goes a long way. Have your rag handy, have your rag handy. We're gonna brush and then wipe, okay? I'm gonna do it here where you can see. Of course, I'm doing it in the creases. I always do the darker in the creases, okay? See how I'm lightly going over it? Let that color come through. We're not doing a solid finish. We are not doing a solid finish. This is gonna give it a natural wear. And I had several of you say, please show us you waxing. So I don't know if you can kind of see this, but I want this to be a faded brush skin with the colors coming through. I'm not doing it even over everything, you guys. I'm gonna do it around the edges of this whole panel. Stand back and look. That's what I can tell you. Stand back and look. I'm going to keep working on this. Not right. clear as next. 
clear. We're just about done, you guys. Hang in there. I hope you've hung in with me this whole time. I'm going to start from the bottom and actually work up with the clear. Um, just in a little bit. I don't want to get too much. Of course, a little goes a long way. So. Oh, I love when you put the wax on, you guys. I love how it pulls the colors. Oh, gosh, I've got to get the camera closer so you can see all of this. This just looks so pretty, you know? It just really pulls the colors out. I'm not doing it heavy or anything. You see me? So I'm just lightly going on, lightly going on, and then I'm doing this, rubbing it in. I'm just blending it so it's darker at the bottom, and so the middle of the doors are the lightest part. Okay, I'm gonna continue doing that over the rest, midway down. We're gonna be just about done. We're gonna have to snap some pictures. Guys, I've got it done. We need to tilt it up a little bit, but guys, I've got it done and I absolutely love it. Um, the wax is still setting. Um, it's gonna change, continue to change the color just a little bit as it dries, but we have now created a look finish uh, that you would see maybe on a Moroccan door with the teal and the fuchsia. We used, um, just to go over, we used sea glass and mint chip as our base coat. We rolled it over the entire piece um, once that dried, we added the Bohemian Blue, all from the DIY paint. Um, the clay over time will harden, so um, I feel like I don't need a whole lot of wax on this finish because it's, it's going to be here, guys. It's going to be here for a long time. So um, once I did the Boho Blue up top, I started using the Hey Sailor because I was going after a little bit of a um, the um, ombre finish, which so many of you have asked how in the world. So remember that we used water. That was when we started using water because we really wanted to mix the boho blue with the Hey Sailor and have the colors come up and kind of overlap with each other, still letting the sea glass and the mint chip come through. Okay, so then we had to find some really great spots in our piece where we wanted our kissing booth to come through, which is your fuchsia. So with that, we applied it with our palette knife, which that was the main thing I wanted to teach you this time was use this handy dandy palette knife. You can see that I get a lot of use out of mine. Um, let's tilt this back up to the top. And with that being said, we get this finish where it's darker at the top because I've used the black wax. Um, the queen bee only came in to give the blue a faded look so that's the only time I used that was just literally I think what we what did we dip it like three or four times and use the water to blend it you can see there's more light here it's darker up top and at the very bottom it's much lighter where you see a lot of your light blues and your sea greens that I combined using the water um, we finished with the clear wax on the bottom and I absolutely love it this piece is going to be available and so now what we need to do is get it dried I need to get the sides finished um, and get the hardware. I haven't got the hardware on here. And then we need to get it inside, stage, and take some pictures of it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, you know, I, um, again, I have a hard time going step by step by step because I change my plan usually each time. And there are often times I will start a piece of furniture and I add a color just because it felt like the right thing to do, but it was not even in my plan. So I hope that I made myself clear. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or contact me at shop at the .com. And again, you guys, thank you for being here and buying my tutorial. And I hope that you learned so much. Thanks as always, you guys. I am literally dripping sweat.